Hey everyone, uh, my name is Sankar and uh, I'm a student at NUS. I'm currently studying environmental biology. I'm also a herpetology enthusiast. Herpetology is actually the study of reptiles and amphibians. And this is usually the part of my introduction where people slowly start backing away from me. Um, but I mean, in all, in all fairness, it's actually something that many people are scared about, right? So when people see that I'm actually in love with these animals, they often ask me, how did you first get intrigued with this group of interesting animals in the first place? So um, I can't really remember an exact point of time in my life when I started uh, getting interested in reptiles and amphibians, but I do know how I started on this journey. So um, when, I was in, when I was doing my national service, uh, I, was, I had a lot of free time in my hands, right? And one of my seniors in NUS was actually doing a research project on the mud snakes of Pasir Ris mangrove. Yeah, so um, I, of course, jumped at this opportunity and I was like, yes, I want to help out. So I turned up at Pasir Ris mangrove. And before I go on, let me explain to you what Pasir Ris mangroves look like, right? So this is Pasir Ris Park, right? And uh, right here is where Pasir Ris mangroves are. So uh, it's actually straddling Tampanese River, and on one side you have the Wild Wild Wet theme park, <laughs> and on the other side you have Pasir Ris Park where people go to have barbecues and walk their dogs, fun stuff like that. But it's not exactly the sort of place you would expect to see snakes, right? So when I went to Pasir Ris Mangrove, do you actually see this? This is actually a boardwalk that's tucked away inside the park itself, and when you go, there's mangrove trees all around you. And if you look down, you can see all sorts of amazing creatures. And uh, that's exactly what we did for this research project. We jumped down into the mud, and almost immediately, we started seeing dog-faced water snakes everywhere. So uh, this was the very first snake that I caught. And as time went on, I got more and more tired. Because let me tell you something about the mangroves. The mangroves, the mud is really, really soft. It's like a really smelly black hole. And when you step in, you just sink in and you can't come out. It, you just, you're just like knee deep. And that was me for like half an hour. I was stuck in the mud for half an hour. And I thought I was going to die. But <laughs> yeah. So um, just when I thought that all hope was lost, I looked up and then I see this this beam of light, because it's nighttime, we were all wearing headlamps. I see this beam of light from the heavens, and then an angelic voice calls out and says, hey, do you need some help? I was like, yes, please. I swallowed my pride. I was like, yes, please. And these two arms reached out, and then they hauled me up to the boardwalk. And when I got onto the boardwalk, I came face to face with my saviors. And it's actually two brothers. Their names are Law Ing Sin and Law Ing Tong. And uh, the rest of them are other herpers that you can find in Singapore. And these are some of my best friends in real life. And on our free time, we actually go out into nature spaces. Where do you think you can find reptiles and amphibians in Singapore? Pretty much anywhere, to be honest. But a good place to start is usually our nature reserves, right? We have many nature reserves in Singapore, and they play home to many species of uh, amazing snakes uh, uh, and, and amphibians as well. So herping is what we call it when we go out into these green spaces and look for these animals. And someone who does that is called a herper. See, now we're all learning. Now, uh, next. So these are some of the amazing animals that I saw. This, this snake, I saw it on my very first time properly herping. Uh, this is a twin bud tree snake. And to me, this is one of my favorite snakes in Singapore because they can flatten themselves like a ribbon and jump off trees and then they can glide from one tree to another. Yeah, I know, right? It's, it's insane. And um, this is the Malayan horned frog, right? I know, exactly. So this is a frog that lives in the leaf litter, all right, in places like Bukit Timah Nature Reserve. It's a very hard to find frog. I, I, I'm sure you can guess why, because it looks exactly like a leaf and it lives in the leaf litter. And when I'm standing right next to it, it doesn't move. It, it doesn't make a sound. The only way you know that it's there is when you're walking through the forest, one day, suddenly you'll hear it call, and its call sounds like this. And, and that's, that's the only sign that you know that it's there. 
and you have to track down that noise and find it, and it looks like a leaf hiding amongst the leaves. So it's, it's, it's really hard to spot these guys. Next, please. And lizards are really cool as well. These are a group of lizards called gl gliding dragons. All right, what they have is they have a flap of skin between their limbs, and they can expand their rib cage outwards. They jump off trees, and then they glide from one tree to another. And if you go to Bukit Timah or to the Central Catchment Nature Reserve, and just look at the trees where the sun is shining, you'll easily be able to spot one or two of them actually sitting on the trees and flashing their really colorful dewlaps at you. Yeah, and this is just a tiny snapshot of a small number of animals that you can find on this tiny island of Singapore. If you asked me to give a talk about the reptiles and amphibians of the world, I, I, I'd be here for three days, and I still wouldn't be done. So, when you see flying snakes, uh, ninja frogs, and, uh, and, 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 and literal dragons in our nature reserves, it's impossible not to fall in love with these animals because, because they are beautiful. But despite that, people are still disgusted by reptiles and amphibians. Next, please. So when people think about conservation, they usually think of adorable things like your panda bears, your otters, your snow leopards. And that's understandable, right? Because, I mean, let's face it, they're beautiful, right? They're gorgeous. But these guys form a very small part of the animal kingdom as a whole. And most of the time, people ignore and sometimes even fear animals like these guys, the small guys, the little guys, right? Like cockroaches, spiders. How many of you like spiders? How many of you hate spiders? Yeah, quite a few hands. Many people hate spiders. We've invented this entire industry around getting rid of these animals, and we call it pest control. So who's looking out for these little guys? So let me give you an example of our perception of these animals in Singapore. All right, uh, I'm going to talk about the reticulated pythons. All right, uh, and I'm going to be using screenshots from Facebook posts by Stomp, which we all know is a bastion of journalistic excellence in Singapore. <laughs> All right, so uh, I want you to notice the language used, and this language is, and, and, and the language that we use matters. It's really important, all right? So over here you can see, Yochukang condo resident makes nightmare find in home. The, the snake turns aggressive. The python strangles a cat. And horrific find, and, and to go the extra step, they pixelate the python. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> So you know that, you know, we, even in our media, we are creating this stigma against these reptiles, even though, honestly, the truth couldn't be further from that. They want nothing to do with us, right? Reptiles and amphibians, frankly, just want to be left alone. And these pythons actually give us a very important ecosystem service. They get rid of rats. Imagine I killed every single python in Singapore. I'd never do that, but let's say I did. We'd have rats running all over the place because these guys, Underneath the sewers where they live, they actually get rid of these rats for us. They control diseases. And we take that for granted, and when we see them, we freak out, freak out and call pest control. So what should you do next? What should you do when you see a reptile or amphibian? Well, don't panic, first off, right? Because that's what most people are likely to do. But don't panic, because these animals don't mean you any harm, right? So you can look at the animal from a safe distance, and it'll be fine, he's gonna go on his own way. And uh, if you or the snake is, or, or, the, or, the, or the animal is in danger, you can actually contact Acres, which is a 24-7 wildlife rescue organization, and they do wonderful work in Singapore. This is just in Singapore, but anywhere across the world, if you see these animals, there's no real reason to panic. You can perfectly interact with them without having to, you know, like one side has to die, that's not how it works. Next, please. So where did we go wrong? Why is it that we think pandas are adorable and we need to save every single forest where you can find a panda, but if you see a snake, you've got to kill that snake. That's, that's wh where did we go wrong? There's this Malay phrase uh, that goes, tak kenal maka tak cinta, right? Which literally means you cannot love what we don't know. And that's very true because uh, Singaporeans are removed from the reality of nature. We love to live next to nature, but we hate being woken up by the quail bird at 7 a.m. in the morning, right? You all know what the quail is? The quail is the thing that goes, coo -hoo, coo -hoo. yeah, yeah, now you all know. So um, we love living next to colorful flowers, but if insects are attracted to those flowers, we want to kill them all, we'll fog them all. 
and uh, if you want to live near the nature reserve, and then a monkey comes up to you and uh, it tries to take a plastic bag because it thinks that's where the food is, right? Or it rummages through your dustbin. Then you call the authorities and get the monkeys culled. And that's the, that's, the, that's the thinking that we as Singaporeans have. We like nature for its beauty, and we don't value nature for its own sake, for life itself. Next, please. So um, we, need to, we need to realize that these things come in a package. You can't have one without the other, all right? We grew up thinking nature is here to please us, but when reality strikes and we realize that nature isn't here for our sakes, we react in anger and we react in fear, all right? So let me tell you this story about the king and I, okay? So uh, remember Ing Sin, the guy from the story earlier? Yeah, so one day, I was sitting at home reading a book, and he gives me a call. He's like, hey, Sanka, get over here right now. I was like, why, what's up, what's up? And I check my phone, and there's like three missed calls, so I start panicking. And he's like, hey, man, you got to get over to the nature reserve right now. I was like, why, what's up? And I heard something in his voice, and I, I was like, just on a hunch, I was like, dude, is it a king? He's like, yeah, 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 it's a king. And I've, I've never moved faster than that in my entire life. In two minutes, I was out of the house. And my mom was nice enough to drive me all the way down to the nature reserve. And here's why I was so excited about it, okay? The, I'm talking, of course, about the king cobra, okay? The king cobra is the longest venomous snake in the entire world. This is an endangered species in Singapore, and for herpers around the world, it's like the holy grail. It's like once you've seen it, you've won herping, that's it. <laughs> okay, it's a legendary Pokemon. So, um, <laughs> the king cobra eats other snakes, and it's, it's easy to see why I got excited by that, right? So the entire uh, ride, I was just praying and hoping, please, don't let the king go away. Don't let the king go away. And so we finally got there. Uh, Ing Sin and one of my other friends was standing above the drain, okay? And he said, okay, Sanka, come here. My mom, safe distance, of course. I was like, I ran up to them and I was like, hey, okay, where's the snake? They're like, okay, so the snake went under the drain and it's under the culvert there. So if you want to see it, you have to get down into the drain, lying down, facing the snake. If the snake rushes at you, just give us a shout and we'll pull you out. <laughs> I was like, okay. So I got down into the drain, right? And then <laughs> this is what I saw. I know, it's beautiful, right? This is the king cobra. <laughs> It's a golden colored snake. And honestly, I was, that was, for me, it was a life-changing moment because I'm face to face with an apex predator, a snake that eats other snakes. If it had wanted, it could have rushed out and killed me, but it didn't because at the end of the day, what I was doing was respecting its space. I wasn't rushing into that drain, you know, try to pull it out and then take photos with it or anything. I was respectfully observing it from a safe distance, right? And Honestly, that's the kind of interaction that we want to promote within Singapore. We don't want people to you know, be scared of them and try to kill them. At the same time, we don't want people to rush in and grab them and, and, and pull it out and take photos with it. We want, them, we want people in Singapore to observe them from a safe distance and appreciate nature for what it is, or at the very least, tolerate nature, okay? So how is it that we can change the way we interact with and view nature? So this is the Herpetological Society of Singapore, which is what the group of us started. We started this group uh, initially just to, you know, do some cool blog posts about snakes in Singapore. But then we slowly started to do things like um, guided walks, where we bring people into nature, where we show people uh, what there is if you actually slow down and take a look. All right. Uh, my personal favorite place to do our guided walks is at Treetop Walk. How many of you have been to Treetop Walk? Yeah, several people have been there. How many of you have seen snakes there? It's like two hands. So like, <laughs> so the point is people all go to Treetop Walk, but they don't slow down enough to appreciate the nature that there is. And that's what we do on our walks. So we bring people into nature and we see animals like this. This is a monitor lizard that was clinging onto a tree at Treetop Walk, right? And this is a twin bud tree snake on our walk again. Uh, Waggler's pit viper. Waggler's pit vipers are really cool. They're one of the seven venomous species of snakes in Singapore. They have these, re they just lie there and, and wait, and they, uh, when, when, when a small animal lands or walks in front of it, strikes out and catches it. But to humans, they're completely harmless because we're too big for them. Uh, this is a kukri snake, a striped kukri snake. 
all right? A kukri is what the Nepalese Gurkhas use. It's the knife that they use, it's a curved dagger. So why is the snake named after the kukri knife? It's because uh, their teeth are actually curved, just like the kukri used by Nepalese Gurkhas. And my favorite um, thing that I saw in Treetop Walk was this oriental whip snake, which in itself is a very common snake, but it was eating a garden supple skink, all right? So the skink was still alive, and the snake was just like calmly holding it in his jaws and just like moving away from us. And he was just like, okay, I'm gonna have my lunch somewhere else where there's less <laughs> disturbance. And this, is, this was really a Nat Geo moment for me, right? Because you're seeing nature, you know, in its, in, in its raw reality. But um, many people don't notice this because, oh, by the way, all these animals, we saw that on one walk. Yeah, so we went on one walk and we saw four snakes and many, many other things. So people don't realize that you need to slow down enough to observe these animals in their natural state. And these natural moments are happening all around us. Next, please. So uh, at Tree Top Walk, there is a sign that says, caution, beware of snakes. And I always uh, tell our group to take photos with this sign because uh, this sign is wrong and not for the reason that you think. Right? We shouldn't beware of snakes. We should be aware of these snakes. We should be aware that we're stepping into their space and that we are merely visitors in this area. Right? If we can interact with them respectfully and keep a safe distance, we'll actually be able to get along perfectly with all the animals in the forest. So the things we do change. Uh, and every time we go, we see a different way to, to reach out to the public. Right? Sometimes you can't bring people to nature, so you have to bring nature to the people. Right, so uh, there's this thing called Festival of Biodiversity every year where um, people actually bring specimens and they conduct guided walks near uh, shopping malls, right? Because you want people in the shopping malls who are the people who don't know anything about nature to come out and experience nature in its reality, right? So uh, the things we change, the things we do are constantly changing and we are always trying out new things. And this is, this is, well, some of the HSS. Uh, so uh, all of us are volunteers. None of us get paid to do this. But all I know is every single one of these people loves reptiles and amphibians. And we think they're beautiful. And it's really easy in this position to get you know, uh, discouraged. Because Singapore has 6 million people. On our walks, we can take out 30 people at a time. How many walks would I have to do to reach out to half of Singapore? That's, that's insane. That's just, like, it's discouraging to, to, to do that. And sometimes it's difficult to change your own behaviors and the behaviors of the people you love as well. So it's, it's, it's difficult. But at the same time, I feel every time I see the volunteers, I get really happy because there are people who love snakes and amphibians and reptiles. And maybe we can't convince you that these animals are beautiful. But if we can convince you that these animals deserve respect, then I think we've done a good job. Thank you very much.